how do I draw? When I sit down and have time, which I gotta say is kind of rare, you know, I'm a mom, full-time business, all the art, and at some point I actually have to paint. So <laughs> it's like my therapy. So when I sit down to actually draw, it is because I want to relax into it. I want to experience the pencil and paper. And sometimes it's just when I'm avoiding laundry and <laughs> my daughter shot this video of me painting, well, uh, not painting, but drawing, because on a I had a mound of laundry and I hate doing laundry. <laughs> it's, ugh, I hate doing laundry. Anyway, so yeah, I will draw during laundry time. But I don't typically draw just to paint because I do get very detailed in my drawings and I'd rather leave that detail into the paintings. And if I put the kind of detail into my drawings, I limit myself in how free I can be in my painting. So the, the square grid method, this is probably one of my go-to methods when I just want to get to the easel and I just want to start painting and it is something easy that I can throw into a four grid little system and sketch it out with my paintbrush. And you'll see me use this, this method quite a bit in my paintings. Um, the next method is the triangle grid method. So I use the triangle grid, um, a lot. This is probably one of my most go-to, especially when I have more than one subject. So I'm painting like two dogs or maybe I have, you know, a deer and the horizon and I got to make sure that the horizon line is, you know, straight. You can't really do that with, you know, kind of guessing it. So that's about perspective. If there's weird perspective or something unusual going on, I will definitely use a triangle method. I will also use the triangle grid method system when I take a multiple reference photos, when I take multiple reference photos and put them together in Photoshop. And that way, when I relay that image over to my canvas via the triangle method, I make sure that I get each one of those in the perspective places correctly. So again, it goes back to the complexity of the image. Um, tracing, I will use the tracing method if the subject is small and I just kind of want to hurry up and get there. And if I, <laughs> if it's like a, you know, six by six, eight by 10, something that I could just print out, I'll consider it. But most of the time, if I'm painting something small, it's a pretty simple subject and I will go back to the grid method of the squares, just the four little simple things. But tracing is definitely a tool, okay? Uh, the camera obscura, it, uh, what today we call a projector. Uh, <laughs> projector, I don't particularly like using a projector and for the reasons that I listed before, but also um, when I do use it, I will use a combination because of the issue with making sure everything's perpendicular. So what I'll do is I will combine the triangle method along with the projector. So that way I make sure that I align my triangles perfectly. Otherwise it's just not right. The last one is the camera lucida. This one I kind of dig um, because this method, it's almost a lot like tracing and, but without getting your fingers all messy. And you know, like I, like I said before, I'm kind of a little weird about the graphite paper because once I get it on my fingers, then I mess with my hair and then I got it all over, you know? <laughs> so. I will use this method for small objects because again, you've got the issue of uh, scalability. There's only so high that the camera lucida can go. So all these tools are available to you. Now, what do I encourage you to use? Try them all. But in my videos, in the upcoming videos, you're gonna see me primarily stick with the grid method, the square grid method, the triangle grid method, but I also want you, because it is available to you, it's a tool for you, either try out the Lucida, and I'm gonna include some apps in this um, training tutorial so that you can download those and use those at your, at your discretion. Because my purpose, again, is to make sure that you have a good foundation so that you can paint. I'm here to teach you how to paint in oils. If you wanna take the drawing class or something like that, I would strongly recommend that as well. I have been to a lot of them and they're a lot of fun. And like I said, it is the most relaxing thing that you can do, okay? 
So I hope this addresses any of your questions, concerns, and I hope you feel more comfortable with getting to the point where you can have a good foundation to paint on because that's our next step is I'm going to show you how to paint. We're going to talk about colors. We're going to talk about techniques. We're going to talk about all the fun things that get to go into painting. Thank you.